So the rainy weather is persisting. And I would really like to go for the first test drive, but I'm not interested in getting wet. So I'm going to start working on installing that windshield. Welcome back to my one-man shop out here on a farm in the middle of a forest down in South Africa. Yes, <laughs> there's more here than just lions and elephants. We actually play with old cars too. My name is Duff and I'm addicted to rust of the automotive, <laughs> of the automotive kind. <laughs> I can't speak proper English. Hey, thank you so much for all the name suggestions. So many. And some really clever ones too. I'm totally overwhelmed. Like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> you know, that's only allowed to make one choice. I'm actually toying with the idea of giving the responsibility to my wife. Who knows, I might get some extra brownie points, which is always handy. Those of you guys who've been around the block, you'll know how it works. You mean around here, I'm the one wearing the pants. But the wife, she's the belt that holds the pants up. <laughs> I don't have the original glass, but it wouldn't have worked anyway. It would be too big because I chopped the roof by four inches here in the front. So I'm going to start by making a hardboard template of this opening. So I'm just going to clamp on this piece here so that it can't move and then I can do a trace from the inside and cut it out. I might have to do it a few times and fine tune it but let's get going. I'm just going to do a rough cut first and then I'll go and try it again and mark it and fine tune it so that it fits nicely and properly. <laughs> Alright, let's go give it a shot. So it's still too big, but I knew that. Now I can refine my shape. So the boat builder is called this technique spiling. S-P-I-L-I-N-G. So by riding this bit of wood on that bottom surface and then I mark it here you'll see it actually transfer the curve to my pattern. So I'm going to keep trimming my hardboard piece until it's a nice fit in that window recess. So I've got some carpenter blood in me so I'm using my small little block plane but yeah of course you can use whatever works for you. Let's go try it again. So I've got my template fitting nicely in this recess. And now I'm going to remove another three millimeters or about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So my template is fitting inside this recess and resting on that lip like that. And what I'm saying about removing the quarter, the eighth of an inch, the three mil is taking off a little bit there, all the way around, like that. I've, the, the, the hardboard is three millimeters thick, so I've used offcuts as spaces all the way around. So what have we got? My template is sitting on that lip, I've got a three mil gap all the way around, and it's worth spending the time to make sure that this gap is as nicely and evenly as possible, so that you've got a great fit. <laughs> so at this point you're probably wondering what the hell is the old man up to out there in his forest hideaway. So let me explain my game plan to you. So this will be your normal standard setup, traditional. You've got this rubber molding that fits over that lip and then the glass will go in here like that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use modern technology. So if you go this route, it's normally quite a process to get the glass to go in there. 
The guys use strings and all sorts of tricks to get the glass to fit on all sides. Um, but, but apart from that, my main problem is this. I can find this type of section around here, but it's so stiff. It just comes in a normal straight length. It's not pre-shaped. And to get it to go around a tight corner like this, it's pretty much impossible. I mean, I can't even push it. I, it needs a lot of force to get it to go into that corner. So generally, I am a huge fan of old school methods. But in this case, I'm going to say out with the old and in with the new. I'm going to be using this modern windscreen adhesive like they use on all the modern cars and I'm just going to glue in my windshield so my glass is going to sit on that lip like that and I'm going to bed it in that sticky stuff I've done it before, it works really well so I'm going to share with you that whole process so I've got a great fit on this side so what's the chances of this template fitting that side? let's find out Not looking bad, eh? Let me get the spaces in. It's close, but it's a tight fit in this corner here and also in the bottom corner. And that uh, three mil one eighth gap is very important. We need it to allow for the contraction and expansion of the glass because steel and glass don't move in the same way with temperature changes. So I think I'm just going to make myself another template for this side. That would be the best thing to do. So I've got a template for each side. I just have to cut some slots in here. And then she'll look like one of those World War II contraptions. <laughs> the plans you make when you're a single hander, eh? <laughs> Gravity is going to help me to hold this board in place. So that I can mark it from the inside. So I also don't have the original glass for the back here, so I've made a template for this one as well. And I'm going to glue it on from the inside, so that we'll end up with a nice clean edge, as it is now. So these doors comes off a truck that was in a very bad fire. Um, I've talked about it in one of my previous videos. So the original glass that was in here got completely melted and the interior mechanisms are stuffed. So I've stripped that all out. I'm not going to have side windows, but I am going to put in some glass like this. So I've made a template for that as well. And then this will also be glued in with that window adhesive from the inside. And it will just stay like that permanently. I think that'll work quite well. So I've now got five templates that I can cut off to my local glass shop so that they can cut it for me <clears throat> so I don't know how it works where you live but I'm not going to tell those ladies at the glass shop that this is going to be a windshield I'm not going to mention the name car or the word car or nothing like that I'm just going to tell them to make it for me from safety glass please and if they should ask what it's for I'll say it's for a door or something um, because I know if I say windshield or car, they're going to not want to do it. And they're going to insist on stamps of approvals and all sorts of nonsense. Now, I don't need no stamp of approval from some governing body who is protecting idiots from themselves. Uh, funnily enough, if you go read the regulations about windscreens in South Africa, the only thing it says is that it should be made from safety glass. That's what I'm going to be doing, and it's going to be good enough. <laughs> There's this windscreen trademark that gets thrown around a lot out here. Shatterproof, P-R-U-F. And once I went into the back of the glass shop to speak to the old man who's been cutting glass for most of his life. And I asked him, and I said, listen, what's the difference between shatterproof and safety glass? And he just laughed at me and said it's exactly the same thing. The one has just maybe got a tint in and a fancy stamp on it. <laughs> I need to get my templates to the glass shop 
So in the meantime, I'm going to wire brush these landings to get rid of the rust. The Sika data sheet. I should be using their special 207 primer for this bare metal, but I can't source that product anywhere, so I'm just using South Edge primer. I've actually done it before, and some years later, I still haven't got any problems, so it would seem to be working well enough. Right, so I've got my landings prepped and primed. I got my glass. I'm very excited about that. Let's get ready to put it in. Let's open this up so we can see if it fits. Hope so. <laughs> Alright, so this is the first one. Made according to the template I provided and it looks good. And I think this is also the left hand one. Let's go see if it fits. So let's just do a dry run here first. Give it a try. Yeah man, that looks good. I've got my little hardboard spacers, I'm just putting them in to write those gaps that we talked about. It's all looking pretty good. Ah, we're getting somewhere. Let's try the brother as well. This is six millimeter, quarter inch safety glass. Yes. A little bit of a twist in the bodywork here, eh? that's not so great. Glass shape is good though. My man Philip did a good job. <laughs> a little bit concerned about this twist here though. It's going to have to equalize it a little bit. But it'll work. Well I think we'd all better take a very careful look at this. Because this is the cleanest this glass is ever going to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fitting well. The shape of the glass is good. I'm happy. So I think I must start getting ready for the sticky stuff. That's going to be fun. Now I've used this technique of gluing it in place twice before. And on both occasions I taped up the edge of the glass. And I carefully taped up the metal work here. And then I would put in quite a bit of sealant, squeeze the glass in, and then it will obviously squeeze out here. Yeah. And then I would use a finger to smooth it out. Lots of acetone involved, lots of spit involved, lots of rags involved, a big sticky mess. So maybe here on the road, Rat, you can see what I mean. That uh, the squeeze out of that polyurethane adhesive. I smoothed out as best as I can with my finger, but I tell you, that was a mission and a messy business. <laughs> Here's a close-up of the same technique used on a dusty <laughs> triple R recovery rig. It's nice and neat and tidy enough, but like I said, it's a freaking mission, man. So I want to try something different this time. I got this T-section rubber. And I'm going to try and do it in such a way that the squeeze out is not that much. And then I want to install this rubber. It's to going one way. Like that. And squeeze it into the squeeze out, if that makes any sense. So that it ends up sitting like that. I think that was actually going to be a lot quicker and a lot neater 
and a lot easier. But I've never done it before, so let's see how it turns out. <laughs> There's a close-up of the cross-section of my so-called T-rubber, just so that you can see what it looks like. So this stuff is a moisture-curing polyurethane product. So your curing speed is going to depend on two things. Number one, temperature, and number two, relative humidity. And the data sheet gives a open time of 15 minutes at 23 degrees Celsius and at 50% relative humidity. So you don't have a lot of time to mess around. And yeah, by me, I think my uh, humidity is probably closer to 80% at the moment. So you really have to be quick and fast. Important to plan and get and be ready before you actually start doing this. You gotta get that glass in within that open time period. Once it starts skinning over, you're basically stuffed. And when this stuff is cured, it's the only way to remove it is mechanically. So basically, bottom line, you got one chance to get it right. So my landings are primed. I've checked the fit of my glass. So I'm just going to clean the glass surfaces with some methylated spirits. And once that is done, I think I'm going to start gunning in that sticky stuff. I think paper towel would probably be better, but I haven't got any. So this is going to have to do. I'm only going to be cleaning here where the polyurethane is actually going to sit. It's not necessary to do the inside at this point. So I don't have a camera person, <laughs> so if I go missing in action it's because I've been stressing to get this done right and I didn't have time to mess with the camera. So let's see how this is going to work out. I'm just going to install these little spacers temporarily down here. I'm trying to not touch the edge of the glass. Here it goes. <laughs> Let's squeeze it in. Just ensuring that I've got my three more gap all the way around. I just want to see how this is going to fit. Oh, it seems to be working, eh? So I'm squeezing my rubber, trying to squeeze my rubber into the polyurethane that's in the gap seems to be working all right i've never done this before <laughs> i'm just concerned that i might not be picking up enough of it i think i need to gun in a little bit more yes
I've got a little bit too much glue in. It's squeezing out. But I can clean that up. And it's good, I'm not going to mess with it now. <laughs> okay. So far so good. Well, that certainly got me heated up. But it's in. And I can relax a little bit now. <laughs> I still have this stuff all over my hands. I don't know, this black stuff just jumps on you, man. So I just used some pieces of uh, masking tape to help me hold that T-section rubber in place while the polyurethane is curing. Um, I don't know, this is the way I do it. I've never done it before like this, so it's invention on the go. We're making plans on the go. Seems to be going to be working though. I don't think it looks bad. It's certainly a lot quicker and easier than my previous method where I was tooling that squeeze out and when I didn't have the rubber to trim it like this. So that squeeze out that you can see there is on the inside. I'm going to clean that up mechanically once the stuff is secured. Well I've had some practice with that first one. So let's see how it's going to go now with this one. <laughs> You know what's a funny thing, if you look at the data sheet from this thing, look at this picture here. That's how they say you should lay a bead. Now how the hell are you supposed to do that? It's impossible. <laughs> Getting the hang of it now, and I think this one actually worked out even better than the first one. Which is cool because this is the more important one. This is the one on the driver's side. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the windscreen to cure and I'm going to start uh, checking out my quarter windows. Just going to do a dry run here to see how they fit. Oh, that looks pretty good, eh? I think I'm going to get ready to glue this one in place as well. I wire brushed the landing here, primed that with selfage primer as well. So my glass will go in like this. I made up this retainer plate that just helped me keep it in place. And then up here, I think I will, um, up here, I think I will just temporarily hold it in place with this block of wood and a clamp, like that. And I can take this then off when it's cured and dry. Yeah, I think that can work. I'm just using my finger to just uh, <laughs> work the stuff in here and then I'll clean it up nicely and when it's cured nothing beats a middle finger eh? <laughs> okay lacquer my quarter windows are in and once my sticky stuff has gone hard <laughs> I'll clean this up a bit mechanically we're using a carpet knife and something like that It's not really working, is it? That Zika data sheet warns you not to clean your hands with solvents, eh? But of course it doesn't apply to a South African bush mechanic. <laughs> Besides, you will have more sense than me and you would be using disposable gloves, won't you? So Zika talks about a 
two hour safe drive away time but I'm gonna let my gooey stuff cure until tomorrow but I can definitely start taking off this masking tape I mean at least it will look better than what it does at the moment <laughs> Yes, so now I've just got to clean up the squeeze out on the inside. But like I said, I'm going to do that tomorrow. So I'd like to do the back window next. But I'm going to have to remove that seat again. I mean, how many times do you have to fit and remove and fit and remove parts when you build these custom things? It's just crazy, man. But it's all part of the game, I suppose. <laughs> and it still beats mowing the lawn. All right, it's loose. Out you come. So I got to figure a way to hold this glass in place while the polyurethane cures. So I've clamped on these wooden blocks. And now my idea is, I'm just trying it here with my template. My idea is to stick that in there and put a wedge there and there. I think that can work. I can even add another piece of wood up here with a clamp like that to hold it there as well. Yes, I think this is going to work. I'm going to do this. Let's just take it out again. So I got this one in as well, using exactly the same method. Looking all messy here on the outside, but don't cry. <laughs> I'm going to sort it out and clean it up as soon as the stuff has gone hard or cured or however you say it. So I've got all my glass in. I'm going to let it cure until tomorrow. And then I'm going to clean it up and then we can see what the finished product looks like. P.S. This black stuff does not come off your hands. I've just scrubbed mine and look at them. <laughs> so I'm going to have to work it off or wear it off. <laughs> so I've decided to add the small muffler after all, I mean, this truck is just too bloody noisy, man. <laughs> and I'm not sure that I particularly like the sound of the little four banger unmuffled. Maybe with this, it will sound a little bit better. So I'm just going to put my exhaust back in. So once the stuff is cured, it's actually quite easy to remove it with a blade. We're just cutting it. And peeling it off with your fingers. <laughs> what a um, don't try and wipe it when it's wet. It will just become a huge sticky mess. So it's much, much better to just leave it, to, to squeeze out to cure. And then cutting it back like this. Check it out man, I think it turned out pretty damn good. Let me zoom in a little bit. 
I think that rubber really worked well. Oh, my quarter windows don't look bad either. And if I ever want to do side windows, I could use an H section and then come up with some way to have yeah, side glass moving up and down. <laughs> and here's my windshield after cleanup. I'm very happy with it. I think it turned out really well. Let me just zoom in here on the rubber section so you can see what that looks like from up close. I think it works very well. So of course with this YouTube thing, the dude with the camera decides what you want to see. And if you want to be the main man, you'll never show your fuck ups. I mean stuff ups, sorry. Um, <laughs> but this is the real world man. I mean, I'm sure you've all heard that word. <laughs> um, and I think it's important that uh, I show you my stuff ups as well. I mean, if you don't show them, you're cheating, man. We all make faults. And it's, it's, it's not the perfect world, it's the real world. So I had to cut my test for my rubbers in this corner here. And as you can see, I did not do a good job. And right there, if you look carefully, that's actually on the inside of the glass. There's a little bit of shortage of the uh, polyurethane and I didn't get proper squeeze out. So luckily in the big picture it quickly disappears. <laughs> you don't see it that easily. And besides I do have the perfect excuse. It's just a bloody rad rod. <laughs> Top corner is better. Still not perfect. But you know what for the rest? I think it turned out pretty damn good. I mean, look at that. We now can do with some cleaning. So if you are a glass expert, just remember one thing, eh? I'm just a bush mechanic out here in darkest Africa. I did read the, the data sheets on this Sika Attack Go, and I do talk about activators and special primers. So that would be the right way to do it, I suppose. But hey man, I can't find that exotic stuff out here. So this is the way I'm doing it. I installed this dusty windshield in exactly the same way. And this is now in for at least three years. And it's still fine. So yeah, it seems to be working for me. <laughs> so let's see how my wiper arm is going to work out. I'm just going to slip this on here loosely for now. Yeah, I think it's going to do it. This is a uh, wiper blade from a Land Rover. The ones I use Series 2, Series 3 Land Rover. It's only about 11 and a half inches long. And I did cut a little bit off the ends. But now I think it's going to do the trick. I think I need to get some water on here and see if it works. <laughs> Take this piece of plastic off and tighten my bolt. Right, moment of truth. I might have to set it slightly different, but I'm just going to spray some water on here. Let's switch it on and see what happens. It might help if I connect the battery. <laughs> okay, let's try again. I had the battery disconnected because I was welding the muffler. Okay. Hey, hey man. Perfect. I don't even think I need to change its position. I think it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> How about that? All my glass is in place and I'm a happy chappy. <laughs> so now we just need a break in the weather and then we can take this truck for a more decent test drive. I can't wait. Thanks for hanging out with me. I enjoyed it. I'll see you folks in the next video. Have a lucky one.